Many parents are struggling with how to talk to their children about yesterday's school shooting and the shootings before that, before that, and before that. But what to do if your kids are anxious about returning to the classroom? We are going to talk about that right now. We are joined now by Jamie Howard. Thank you so much. She's a senior clinical psychologist from the Child Mind Institute. Um, we didn't hope to see you so soon, yeah. um, especially under these terms, but we do appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Many parents think that talking to their children about a school shooting might upset their children, maybe even themselves. Mm -hmm. And I can raise my hand on that one. But why do you believe it's important for parents to have these very open and honest conversations? We want kids to learn about big traumatic things from a trusted adult. If they learn about it from other kids on the playground, in homeroom, or overhearing it on the radio in a, in a store, then they're going to hear potentially more sensational bits. They're not going to have accurate information, and it's more likely to scare them. So we want trusted, loving adults to be the ones to deliver this kind of big, scary information to kids. What it, age do you believe we should start talking to our kids? Around school age, right? So if you think that your child might hear it, it at school or is likely to hear it from someone else, then you want to get ahead of that and be the one to tell them. So I have a child in preschool. I did not tell him, but I did tell my daughter who's going into kindergarten because she just learned the F word from a friend, mm. his older sister. So, right. you know, we don't know what, she, what else she might hear. And I want to be the one to tell her about that. It's already hard to discuss certain things with your children. So how would you on a topic like this, mm -hmm. open the conversation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, an opener is, you know, I'm feeling really sad about a news story that I saw, and I wonder if you've heard about it. So first you can sort of ask, like, are you familiar with this? Have you been hearing anything? And you always want to start with providing a little bit of information and let them ask for more. You don't want to jump in with a lengthy, detailed explanation, because it might be more than they need and more than they want. So you can say, I heard some kids got hurt. Have you heard about that? And, and then let them say, how did they get hurt? Or, you know, what, what other questions they might have? And you can sort of meet them where they're at. You know what I keep thinking, Jamie, that these kids were second grade, third grade, fourth grade, which means you're seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. School is your happy place. We all remember that age. We couldn't wait to go to school to see our teachers, to see our friends. Right. What do you say to the children, to the parents, whose kids are saying, I don't want to go back to school. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't even happened at their school. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, about the horror of what these other children who survived witness. Mm -hmm. The children, I, I can't only imagine the mm -hmm. conversations parents are having with their children this morning. Right. And their kids are saying, I don't want to go to school. Well, of course, that's a natural urge, right. right, when we think that we're under threat. So the thing to keep in mind is, statistically, it still is unlikely, very, very unlikely to happen in It doesn't your feel like it, though, It doesn't. These days. It's, no. it's, it feels so close to home. It, yes. It, and that's, that's that's the way the human mind works. We see something big and scary and it could affect us and we imagine it affecting us. And, and we should take action and we need to do something to help these families that have been through this. And at the same time, it's still relatively unlikely that it's going to happen in your school. And so you want to talk to your kids about safety measures in place. So that's what I did, for example. I was like, so... What did you say? I was like, well, let's think about how people get into your school. The doors are locked, and they have a system where you have to put your license in, and then they scan it before they'll unlock the doors and so let So reminding them about... Reminding them are. of, like, what the grown-ups around them are doing to help keep them safe. They practice stay-put drills in their school um, where the doors are locked and they stay quiet. And... I don't think my daughter even knew what they were for, so mm -hmm. they weren't so scary to her. Mm -hmm. Now she has a better understanding that they're to help keep her safe. You know, kids expect grown-ups to fix things. Mm -hmm. And as we yes. mentioned, you know, sort of opening up this mm -hmm. bigger, bigger question to them is, who is going to fix this? Mm -hmm. How do you explain that this keeps happening over and over again mm -hmm. and the problem isn't getting fixed. Mm -hmm. I think you can have some transparency. You don't want to seem necessarily out of control, irate in front of your kids because that scares them when you have big emotions like that. But you can say, this makes me really angry. It's our job to protect you and we're not doing that. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write to local federal government and say, 18 year olds shouldn't have guns. Their brains aren't developed yet. Mm -hmm. They can't buy alcohol and they can't drive a car, they can't rent a car, why can they have a gun? So I'm going to do that for you. And I'm also going to stay really active in our community to try to monitor safety for you. What I've learned recently is that my kids are usually a reflection of how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And because I play football for so long, I put on this, this face mm -hmm. that everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I feel like crying, I'll do it in my room. Mm -hmm. If I feel that I'm stressed, I'll make sure my kids don't see me. Mm -hmm. 
What advice do you give to parents mm -hmm. um, that are walking into their home and they have the weight of the world on their shoulders, they are emotionally mm -hmm. depleted, mm -hmm. and they don't want to give that to their kids because they'll wear it like a cologne as mm -hmm. they walk around. Right. Yes, yeah, kids really do vibe off of us. So we want to be mindful of the intensity of our emotional expression. So it's okay gotcha. if we look sad. It's okay if we look angry. Just we want to keep it sort of a moderate intensity because it, if it's too big, it feels scary to them. That's helpful. Thank you so much, Jamie. And it's Howard. scary to me. I yeah. mean, it's not it just is. children. I'm actually scared myself mm -hmm. about what is happening to us as a nation, as a people. It's mm -hmm. very scary to me. It's Yeah, it's very scary, and, and it makes a lot of us very angry. Yep, yes. We appreciate you, Jamie. Yes. Thank you so much.